Hello and welcome. Today's date comes in that of Tuesday, 17th day of December 2019. My name is Derek and welcome to the Money Charts channel. Let's take a look at silver, gold, palladium, platinum, and then uh, something totally off topic on that. Uh, today's a daily fantasy hockey. I don't talk much about it, but I'm going to get into that subject and I'll go through my research. And if you're into it, I got a lot of good information. At least I'm going to give you the early information I got because I'm only a third of the way through my uh, work. All right. So within silver, price action at $17 per ounce right now in the late morning. And uh, it's an interesting pattern. I like at this from the December 12th highs and then the three following periods, including today's, that have occurred. We can see, and not only just for this three, but really from the start of this move higher, like the four days, how we have this nice little uptrend. Nice little look. So I see something like that. I don't even, I haven't looked at the shorter terms, like the one hour chart, but uh, that tells me it's going to look very, very interesting. And I also see that this level of resistance here, run this 17 and low chain, 17, 12, 13, 14 ballpark area. And it's good. It hasn't been there yet, but upwards to 17, 23 to 17, 30 uh, is pretty big, which is the pierce below the 17, 40. And this was a very rare, weird situation where when, we came to this low in here that we had one, two opportunities to hit 1740 and didn't do it. Okay, well, it was also supposed to, in this down move state when December 6th low came in, well, we're going to 1613. Uh, so far, it's succeeding its correctionary phase, it being its down move, via that, or in that, it hasn't uh, failed on this 18 of highs yet. If it stays within it, then we see it breaking below, like we see price action, unable to get above this level, break down below the low, the low 16 and two thirds ballpark area. Yeah, now we're gonna pierce below that 1613 number. But adjust to the message of the market and things changing because if that doesn't happen and we don't even, let alone even testing the 1675 as we've had this nice little uptrend, if that doesn't happen, and it can even test the 1675 and break higher. But if it breaks through above this because the statement of the market was not supposed to do that and go lower, well, that would verify to me that it's a failed breakdown in here. And uh, I'd be looking at a nice break above the 1740, probably the next key move up to the 1823. As it comes down to it, when, I mean, if, I, if people were to, if just for hypothetical stake, I take a random person in a financial level and you talk about basic investing capital in that, okay, maybe you got a house, you live in it. Yeah, it's an asset. It's good that you have it and own it, but we're not going to count that as any type of uh, asset. And in fact, not only that, but with, within debt, those would be important. You put those calculations, then you see how much cash you got, what real investments you may own, which is stocks, of course, gold, silver, if you got that, cryptos, any of those types of things. And then you look at all of your total liquid assets. And a lot of people with decent amounts, when that number is at least five figures, but six, seven figures, definitely eight and higher. When people have ten thousand, hundred thousand, million dollars worth of extra cash available to it, and practically none of it is in gold, silver, cryptos, it's in actual cash forms, bonds, stocks, whatever in that level. I have to really, really think about that for a second. Then, well, how much of it is actually where you control it? Whether you got private keys on cryptos whether you have the physical gold and silver in your possession, and heck, even your, your paper rectangle notes in your pocket or stored in whatever safe or wherever it may be. And I see that, wow, okay, interesting decision. Because if you don't have these types of assets, then you're really taking a large gamble that, oh, the fiat currency is not going to break down on me and do these types of things. And so far over the last many and many of uh, days and weeks and months and years, it hasn't. After all, the price is still like really cheap, 17, and therefore very, very affordable if you've been on the fence trying to get in or you, ha you happen to just find out about things like the hidden secrets of money, what's going on, stuff like that. You're like, you can be fortunate that we're not like in major uptrend moves. Uh, where the price is so high, it's like, oh, now it's so expensive to buy, say silver $50, $100 an ounce kind of deal. And I truly believe anything under $100 is a phenomenal deal. 
But if it could be cheaper than that, that's even better. Like 50 bucks is half that price and 25 is even half of that and a, a, th a quarter of the hundred. Well, it's 17. So yeah, I mean, no, you're not spending 25, 30 bucks for 50 bucks unless of course it's a damn good premium level and even then it's whatever. But the fact that you can be able to buy it easy for $20 an ounce in physical possession, well, to me, I believe it's a great opportunity. Okay, so that's the daily chart. Like I stated, I haven't uh, browsed through and taken a look at the single hour in here. And it looks like the short term here, possibly ready to revert the trend. But interesting failed move in here on December the 12th, the rally. And then for so, so long, this thing has managed to stay in this kind of trend. A little bit now of a possible breach. We've had these little moves that went below it. And in a situation amongst this, you now would say, okay, if it's going to have a type of correction, then where did we come from? We came from this low at 1650. Where did we get to? We went to this high. And I'm going to calculate Fibonacci for the first time on here. We got, well, 1650 is an easy number to remember. This is 1711. So spin the calculator up. So the key numbers come in at uh, 87 and 73 cents on the 16 handle. So the 73 number, wow, another Pierce less. That, that's odd. That is so odd, but maybe whatever. You also got Fibonacci from this high and this low here as well, too. That's really important. And you can see that this pretty much came in and hit past the 61.8% mark on this move in here. And so far, still holding that as well. But with this uh, all being stated, the key numbers again at the 87 and 73 handle would mean 87 here. We'll, we'll, we'll count that as a Pierce extra on the 87. That's one of the ways of looking at it. So it's this would be the area I'd be looking for as its next support if there's going to be continuation going lower. And if it goes there, what do we do from here? We would probably, again, find support, which means maybe it's a key bottom. Why did it do that? Okay, sorry about that. Uh, anyway, I need to find a way to fix this internet problem because I do live in the country and I have one of the worst reviewed internet uh, providers and I'm trying to find ways of fixing the problem with somebody else, but I'm limited to where I live. With that being said, if it does go in here, you find support at 1687-ish ballpark area. If it comes up here, resists it, comes to 17, pulls back, yeah, then we'd be looking maybe to trace down into here. But because we've already had the hour as it has already, if this thing is able to recuperate, get up to this previous high first, and of course it's going down a bit now, whatever, it's just moving. But if it goes up to 1706, and can at least hold and stabilize that level, but more importantly, start to break this out, get above 17 and a dime. Then, because of this early move in here, I'd be giving this higher uh, recommend, oh, I'm not going to recommendation, but higher, higher aggressiveness level, based on how damn good I think this move would be on the breakout, if it is to occur. Anyway, there's your silver chart. Let's look at gold. And I like it set up. I really, really love it set up. Now we had this low back in here where it was 11.52 in August. And I'm not going to show it now, but there's been a lot of the resistance even prior to this at the 13 quarter mark. And then when it got above it, doing so in the second week, we'll say of June or at the end, yeah, the second week of June, it had a concise, beautiful move, piercing extra on the Fibonacci level of 15 and a quarter. What has been going on since then? Lower highs, lower lows has been going on. We had a lower high on uh, September 23rd area. And then we had another lower high on the uh, October 4th and matching once twice, October 25th and again on November the 1st. And then after making a lower low, we've been making matching lower highs 
1st, we'll say this one here, November 20th, and pretty much December 3rd, and here on December 12th again. Same sort of deal, bring in this price, goes to this high. Doesn't come down to the lows, but damn well close enough on the uh, December 13th timestamp. Yesterday's session, what a beautiful day, how it hangs in there within the highs, and pretty much the same thing today. Holding the 18 lows here to say that this is important. And I could very easily do it, but whether it does in a bullish level, something that with this started to roll higher, and whether it be today, tomorrow, next day kind of deal. Of course, today the 18 average of lows is down to 1462, but even tomorrow, say at 1465, maybe today it goes down to 1468, next day hits a little something like that. If it finds support there, you start to see it lifting higher. I mean, it's just that the setup on it, I really, really think is pretty cool. It needs to get above this level of resistance. It did here, barely, but now that it uh, has had this these two days as it is, I, I think it would have easily have a good size move getting above 1522. And if it gets there, I don't like its chances of much resistance at there. And we're talking 1522. That's, that's 1537 probably at least as well. But when I say don't like much resistance, it means maybe it resisted and holds like 1497 or something or holds, holds, holds 15 even. And then that's not much resistance. And then it just doesn't resist it. We just go to that next level, which is pretty much around 17. So let's take a look at this more long term to show you those uh, key levels. And I'll, I'll use the monthly chart. And it's 1670, usually piercing extra. That would be... I would expect a very, I would probably be fast. It's concise, definitely, but high probabilities of fast as well. Fast meaning you would see it in one month candle. You'd see it over five days, four days, something, nine days, something not not slow. And here's all of these little hits at the 13 quarter mark, which from the lows, you can say started on the like around 2016, 17 area, 2016 here, but it was so much of it even here on its way down to these uh, 1050 number. And from this high, we've had three pause months. And this month is halfway through, and it's very low volatile in that as well. We just haven't even come down to this 18. hasn't even really corrected through time. It's been a small correction. Enough where if this starts to go out, I'd be like, okay, it didn't have a technical correctionary test. But yeah, it did. Yes, it did. You know it did. Because you can just see all of these three sideways pauses just... When you have straight up, pause straight up, these, the three candles in here, as it has the excitation on the 18 highs. So a good green candle up that was up 8%. Then a pause up a quarter, and then another one up seven and two thirds. So two very good up months with the uh, little bit in here. So now a complete full larger time correction from, of course, July, being uh, that of September up until still which is today's date and continuing on as we move forward, at least until it gets above this high. But seeing it get above it, I'm, I'll be looking at this and saying, now how much, what's the chances we resist this? Are we just going to shoot through this level and then go to previous high here? And same thing again at this high. On the situation of breaking on 1900, oh, this thing is ready to go off. We'll see with Palladium next what we do when we break key levels of resistance. But you could end up coming here, maybe pulling back to 15 or pulling. Even, it could even come here to 19, pull down to like, say, 1337 and break higher. Don't think it'll do that, but that's still a possibility. I think it'd be more in line if it were to have a price correction when it comes up there to come back to where we are now, what I'll be saying later, where we came from, because that's where we are now, of course. And then break higher, but it wouldn't surprise me if it goes up there as well. We just congest between, say, 1750 and 1950 for maybe, or 2000 for whatever period of time, and then break it. There's just so many possibilities amongst that level. But because we've had such, okay, that's it for filling this empty space. We have this low of 250. We have the high at 19, and it only goes down to 1050. Uh, what's that look like to me? Like a 23.6% correction ballpark? My memory should have that in play. Yeah, nice pierce below. 1187 is a 23.6% down move. Okay. 
Let's move on next to Palladium. And it's in a very amazing uptrend on its uh, daily term as we have these uh, spring lows of 1300 and then the uh, start of the summer highs at 16. Well, it's much higher than that now. There's your higher low, filling the empty space from this low to this high. And then when we go to this previous high, which coincided more along the lines of this uh, one in here, what did we endure? It's been a very concise move. Along the way, we've had this more intermediate term high and well, there really wasn't much resistance there. It's been a concise move. It's only now starting to have some correctionary move and it's barely anything at that. Has the price been up to 2000? The answer to that is no. The all time high right now is 1998. That's today's session. But right now it's down about a couple percent from that level. So we can see that we're having a little bit of volatility. One of the things I mentioned before is if you get a break of the uptrend line and well, you can see right now that just by without even having to draw a line that this uptrend line has been broken out. So now we got ignition, igniting, igniting fuel of this high volatile big move. And it's just starting within the last two, three days here. I'm going to take a look at more of a longer term levels of resistance as what I'm going to do is I'm going to, um, I'll put this into the weekly chart next, see what I can come up with. And then I will, uh, uh, do the print screen and do it on paint. And within the weekly, as it goes, I've already pushed the print screen. I'm going to put these trend lines together. But there's this level of resistance break, uh, broken. There we have the move above that, down on this level, on the 18 highs, and breaking again the shorter term level. So what I have is I have paint, and I'm just going to push the paste button, which means there's my print screen that I can now go like this and well, what I'll do is I'll take this line here this is a little too big so I take this size first off we have some of these trend lines here that's of course way far away what can we do to uh, connect all of these in here we're really looking at something in the area of round in here. I really need to connect this high in here. That's the important one to connect. So we can see that it connects many of these resistance points in a line like this. So it's very much approaching, but definitely not there yet. It's got a little bit of a distance. I'm looking more. I can see this as 22 on the lower end of here. And I can tell now that it needs to get at least above that. Uh, at least by the end of the year. And of course, as that moves on, the trend line will go higher, so it would have to be higher than that moving into January. Of course, not by much, but anyway, it has to have a clear move above that. Then we're talking about that situation of we've had all of these resistance hits in here. This is from 2016 spanning to the... This is all of 27 and 2017. And then 2018 is the correctionary year, at least the majority of it. Late in 2018, we've started this move, and it took us into earlier in the year to reach that, of course, resistance pivot point. And amongst that time, we can see, because it's been over a half a year, the rate of ascent on the trend line has got up that the gain we've had has just now only caught up to, of course, the entire run of those two years and earlier this year. On the monthly chart, Right, it's been there's that more of that move just well it's extended decently above it but as I mentioned you can say oh it's up too much and all that stuff okay that's an opinion to say that it's up too much but I have to say the contrary because one I've already shown you the probability odds that it's gonna it can break the 18 average or not the 18 average it can break that uptrend line that I talk about well, much higher be just simply because it's near it and then we take a look at this resistance level for where it was this little range area. And this goes back to the start of the millennium. And we, this is two decades now since this high. And it never, it came close to getting back there in uh, 2008 and then 2010-11. We've had, we, had, we congested and stayed held above 500 very, we held and stayed above 565 very nicely. 
And there wasn't much price memory of that beforehand. So that was a good productive statement. Just all of this stuff that happened. But it established this layer of resistance. And then it came and it retested this from here. So now what's happened is we broke this level. There's your very fast and concise move thus far. To say that it's over, well, I'd have to say not. What I like to do to test Fibonacci is if I see a big move, I'll calculate where the 61.8% down move from a high to a low is. So, you know what? I'm going to have to search to see if I get more data. I think I know how to find it. And I want more data, actually. And I found it. It's the Palladium Futures. See, what I'm looking for here, I'm looking for an up move. I need the low and I need the high. And I need, and it pretty much hit the 61.8%, I can tell just by looking at it. So here's the low here. And here's the high. So we have a high in at 1,082, ballpark number. I can even put 1,085. The numbers aren't going to make any difference really at all in that general area, of course. So now for a low number, it's high, and I'm going to divide it by the low. Of course, the computer will do its calculation for me with the program that I made. And we're talking 77. So 1,085, 1,085 divided by 77 to the exponent. The one I'm looking for here is 0.382. And that's 212. And we can see the 212 level here. It pierced extra on the way down. That is just so, so, so normal. Multiple hit level. So this is a huge high probability odds that I think this Fibonacci upside number is going to give me credentials. Now what I'm going to do. 1,085 divided by 212 to the exponent for the up target, which is 1.618. So I have an up target for this to go to $3,000 for its next move. Well, we're at 2,000. So no, I don't think this is overextended too much. Moving on next to platinum. And within it, I don't got more. Okay, there it is. Now it's loading. But there... Uh, there we have some, uh, the lows here of 337. We have the highs of, see, this is where this is different than the other three metals. We have our highs from 2008. The all-time highs for all metals are different years. Where palladium is today. Of course, 2008 here. Silver, 2011. Gold, 2012. We're still in this correctionary phase uh, from this low to this high up here. And we're looking at well more than a 38.2% correction. We'll put the numbers in 338 and 2311. So the 61.8% is 1109. You can see how it has been piercing extra below it and, and aggressively extra. In fact, it's been resi we could have resisted it in here. The 38.2 is in at 7.04. So we've came down, and not very rarely. I'm seeing more of this, I guess, only like the third one I've really seen recently, though, of it piercing less. But even within the 18 as it plays out, you have a situation of this high in here. That, that's well, it's been lower high since then. We retested this low now on two different occasions. So a few lower highs here. This is the first attempt that I had to get above the 18 average of highs. Just like silver. But what's it done since? Well, it stayed in this move. It started to break down here, but why isn't it breaking down further? Because there was a clue. When you've seen this, this was a tell that not only is it going to break down below this low, but we're going even further. It didn't do that. But we had this correctionary move within it. Well, it's failing it because now we're seeing strength amongst the 18 average of highs. And finally, on the daily term, we, uh, we've had a lot of the supported here and just multiple attempts to get this thing back going. There was, uh, from this move in here, of course, has been successfully correcting back to where it came from. Check mark there. The attempt in here to break it, well, no, because it didn't hold this and... 
Okay, well, it stabilized, neutralized it for a while. Now an attempt again with this last correct, this last correct, well, we'll see if it's correct or not in time, but last attempt to get above the 18 average of highs. The attempt was correct. How about that? Making a move back to this little level, okay, in the area, a little lower, that's fine. Now we're in this point in here, 18 average highs. So just like I stay on the outset within silver, to say that this uh, lows is a very important park, I think would definitely be an, un an understatement. Uh, overstatement, whatever, it's, it's most certainly a, a very critical level. And it looks like maybe it might do it. But either way, getting above here, I'd be looking to go up towards this point in here. And that will conclude the medals. Let's talk about fantasy hockey, which is something I'm doing more. I didn't, didn't think the first day when hockey came out that I would be uh, doing this, the fantasy. And then a week, week and a half in the season, I came upon a theory. And the theory is becoming into fact. And it's like, okay, interesting. And I'm, I'm pretty damn good at it. All right. So with that being said, what I'm doing is this is uh, all regular games. Uh, I'll take a look at every game. This is what Vegas says the score is going to be and the percentage they're going to win. So they think the score is going to be 3.4 to 2.1. Well, this is bad. So I'm looking to stack Boston, guys. This is how much the DraftKings cost are. This is how many games they've played and how many goals they've scored. So I'm looking at who's going to get the goals. Uh, Moore is on defense, but it says that he's on the wing on the fourth line. Oh, that's kind of interesting. Um, Nordstrom adds goal value as well at 25. He's a cheap guy to put in. Uh, so these are just some guys that are, I mean, Pasternak and Marchand are dominant. A lot of good players on Toronto that I like. Toronto's expected to score a lot of goals with a high percentage chance of winning. Peter Engvall, Jason Spezza, Jake Muzzin, uh, Zach Hyman, Kerfoot, Kapanen, Nylander, Tavares, Matthews. Mitch Marner as well, although he's not written down here. Guys that go together, Matthews and Nylander should score together. Tavares, Marner, Hyman play on the same line, could score together. And then Kerfoot, Eng Engvall, and Mikheyev. Putting those guys together, they cost cheap because Kerfoot's uh, 3200 Engvall is uh, 3000 And uh, Kerfoot, well, 32 and Mikheyev. Is, uh, he's not listed on here, but Mikheyev isn't too expensive. Uh, he's just not a goal scorer uh, compared to, for what it's worth. Uh, there's a lot of guys on Tampa Bay. Uh, Tampa Bay is supposed to destroy Ottawa. Ottawa's playing a back-to-back. -back. Ottawa got destroyed yesterday by Florida. They're one of the worst teams in hockey. Vegas has given Tampa a 74% chance of winning and probably expected to score about 4.1 goals. Steven Sam, Coy's point, Kilhorn, Pilat, Hedman, they're the big guys. But you got some cheaper guys in here as well. Uh, Shen is listed as uh, forward on daily faceoff, so uh, yeah, that's the guy I'm thinking about. That's forward, rather, excuse me. And Tyler Johnson is questionable to play. Some guys to play together: Killhorn, Stamkos, and Sorelli. If Johnson plays, you can put him with Point and Palat, but even still, just put Point and Palat together. Picat and Gourdet, however that's pronounced, is together. Shen and Marini play together as well. Uh, there's just a few other guys even uh, at the bottom as well. Nashville is playing the Islanders, and I haven't. I've, I've looked at this game. i got nothing written here on it. And that's the last game that I've looked at. i still got to look at Anaheim Philly. i got to look. Uh, so we'll, we'll probably put a little bit of Philly stack in, uh, but nothing too aggressive. Columbus, Detroit. Yeah, I, got, I mean, Detroit's a bad team. you got to go with the Columbus stack. Carolina, Winnipeg. That's a low-scoring game, so probably not going to look much into that game. I'll, I'll find what individual guys there are there. And then we have Pittsburgh and Calgary. Higher scoring game, so I'll probably look to be stacking players on that game. Both teams favor to get over three goals. Montreal and Vancouver. We got a whatever game there. Minnesota, Vegas. And we have uh, probably looking to put a Vegas stack together here. A uh, good chance of winning 3.3 goals. And we also have Arizona taking on the San Jose Sharks. And this is a low scoring game here, so I'm not going to be looking to putting that on there. Uh, so this is, uh, that's a showdown game. That's an advanced strategy. I'm not going to go over. And that's where I'm putting the majority of my stakes in. 75% of my stakes will just go on this game alone. But I'm not going to tell you how I'm going to play Taylor Hall in Arizona. Actually, I'm going to play everybody. That's what I'll say right now. Anyway, shitty guys, stack guys. These are guys, players that I'm not, uh, just other different guys that I found. So on Nashville, uh, you want to play these two guys together. They're cheap. So you put these 5000 in, then you can pay for like the damn expensive guys. So you put your Boston stack in, you stick Trenton and Watson in together. Or especially now, if you put like a... You, you put a, a Tampa Bay stack together, you got to put defenseman Shen in, who's actually a forward. So that's sweet. And I only have to play one defenseman, really. 
You put these two forwards in, and maybe you can put one of these defensemen here as well. I'm going to put all these cheap defensemen in around 20. I got Fabro at 2,500 min cost. Scott Sissons on Nashville at 2,500. And you can put him with Taurus and or Deshane. Just different ways of playing it. Thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.